Oh, forgot to zoom this back out. Oh God. Hello. I'm here to share a new print that I'm working on. I was inspired to make a catacorn girl because Junicorn is coming up as of this recording. And I didn't necessarily want to draw a unicorn every day or even every week, but I did want to do something for June Nicorn. So I'm going to be working off of a sketch in a previous sketchbook of a catacorn girl. And I had the idea this morning of the perfect print to have her in. And what I'm picturing is you know, Catacorn Girl in a dress, like in a very sunny day, and it's a very like VHS Saturday morning 90s cartoon movie poster type vibe. That's what I'm picturing in my head. So before I start actively drawing it, while I do have a composition in my head of what I want it to look like, I do want to do a couple of different studies of compositions of other 80s and 90s movie posters and particularly their VHS cases just to get a feel for like what a good composition could look like or some ideas for other variations of this idea that I have in mind. With that I'm gonna put you back on this little mount here, this little tripod, so that you can uh, look over my shoulder a la Back in the day when I worked at Cedar Point drawing caricatures, boy, is that gonna bring back a whole lot of memories for me. <laughs> okay, now we got you situated. So, I'm just gonna be working out of my sketchbook here. Let's zoom you in so that you can see a little bit better. Let's get our marker backing in place and then, oh, put it in place behind the right sheet. Because for the compositions, I'm just gonna use cool gray markers for the studies. When doing the composition studies, I'm gonna keep a gray scale. So I'm just gonna be working with these Copic marker tints, specifically cool gray number three, number five, and number seven. If I really need it, I do have a cool gray number nine, but I don't anticipate needing to use that. So. Working with these, let us go ahead and pull up some VHS studies. But first, I'm actually going to rough out what I am envisioning first. because my lactose intolerant butt decided to have mac and cheese for dinner. My body is rebelling against me. I did two iterations because when I did this one, I realized, oh, if I wanted to add the text, I'm going to have to move that because there's an awful lot of negative space up here. So I did a second iteration where the text was moved up to balance that. And then I added a uh, kind of unicorn in the middle ground uh, to contrast against catacorn because um, there's a couple different iterations in my head of this poster. And one of those iterations has a unicorn in the middle ground with a like fantasy landscapey kind of thing going on in the background here. But I really, I really like the kind of almost lopsidedness where it's like a lot of the movement is over here and then there's space here to almost balance it out. But I could do a couple of iter iterations where it's like reversed. We'll see how that goes. But first, before I revisit this, I'm going to take a look at some other 
VHS case designs and look at their compositions and see where that gets us. It just sounds like it's breaking when I snap you in place, but it's not. Okay, first case I can think of. It's actually, all dogs go to heaven. Yeah. I remember seeing this as a kid. <laughs> uh, fun fact, my parents had a, uh, a mom and pop store and at one point we doubled as a VHS rental place and we had a whole lot of kids movies and one of those kids movies was All Dogs Go to Heaven. And I always feel the need to bring this up because I've, I've had this discussion with a lot of people who consider themselves animation enthusiasts. This is not a Disney movie. This was made by a former Disney animator by the name of Don Bluth. It is a Don Bluth film, but it is not Disney. I understand the confusion though, because it is made by somebody who used to work at Disney, but he went solo well before making this movie. This was probably his like third or fourth venture. Editing Kelsey, you can correct me. Stay awake from me, screen. I need you to stay awake from me because I need to do... Hmm, this is interesting. Okay. I brought this one up earlier, The Last Unicorn. There's a couple of different posters for this one. And that's what makes this interesting. You can kind of tell which DVD box designs or even like movie poster designs were made in the 2000s. Uh, the ones made in the 2000s typically have the main character up here, the title, and then all the side characters along the bottom. Um, the Beauty and the Beast re-release was also uh, guilty of this format as was the Castle in the Sky remaster. So I'm not gonna be looking at this per se. That's not the vibe I'm going for. This, this one here, a little closer. This one is almost perfect. It might be the original box. It's definitely the DVD, a DVD release box, but I don't know if that's the original poster. Oh yeah, yeah, that looks like the original movie poster. We're gonna go with this one. I love how this frames the unicorn as like the point of light while everything else around her is some varying shade of darkness. That is probably my favorite thing about the composition of this. I'm not going for anatomical accuracy here. I'm just going for getting the gist. I almost wanted to type in Stranger Things, but Stranger Things was released in the late 20-teens, early 2020s, and is referential to the 80s and the 90s. It is not an actual 80s and 90s movie or TV series, so we're not going to be using that as a point of reference. <sighs> is it sad that there's a little part of me that wants to bring up the Big Trouble in Little China original movie poster? Cause I kind of want to bring that up, but I know that that's, I know that that's the '80s vibe, and that's kind of what I'm going for. But it is also an action movie. I want to more reference animated movies. Oh, I just thought of one. Since we're on a Don Bluth kick, Last Unicorn's not Don Bluth. It's a uh, Rankin Bass. It's a Rankin Bass production. But anyway, I remember now. Here we are. Okay. Secret of Nim. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that original movie poster is where it's at. <laughs> that's the 2000s DVD case. We're not using that one. <laughs> I think that's the French one. I'm pretty sure that's French. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I like that though. That is, that is so 80s. It's perfect. <laughs> it, it is perfect. I would not change a thing. My favorite thing about this one that it is very graphic. There's a white border around this whole thing. That to me is fascinating. A little bit of border breaking with the characters in the tree branch up here. I think 
think that's fascinating. This is actually reminding me that I want to reach out to my D&D group and see about playing D&D again. So <laughs> I've mentioned this a couple of times on the channel, I think, but I'll go ahead and mention it again here. For folks who listen to the Fourth Leg podcast, you know about this campaign. So I'm running a campaign which is like Kingdom Hearts, but not set in Disney worlds. It's set in other worlds. The premise is that all my player characters are students at a celestial college and they world hop to study the worlds that they go to, but also one of their teachers has a uh, kind of a personal vendetta against a, an organized group of cultists who make it their mission to go and destroy worlds. And they also work in cahoots with uh, one of my player characters, main nemesis. So the secret of Nim pops up in this campaign because Mrs. Brisby and her children, as well as Jeremy, escape from the farm because the farm has been visited by this cult and the cult has destroyed their world. But it's kind of revealed that there's a like, that mystery dark substance that's never explained in the movie, I've decided, hey, that's gonna be connected to this mysterious dark substance that is in this world that I created and also connected to Dark Eco from the Jack and Daxter series, because I think that's an interesting connection. <laughs> so yeah, the uh, cult had an interest in destroying Jack's world and Mrs. Brisby's farm because of that connection to this dark material. Yeah, it's, there's some interesting connections, and if my player characters, if my players are watching, they have notes on this stuff. <laughs> anyway, so we got the Secret of Nim poster. I'm looking up a lot of Don Bluth posters, it occurs to me. <laughs> uh, but, you know, when I think of 80s animation, I think of Don Bluth. Disney certainly wasn't making a whole ton of animation in the 80s. I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> no, you know what? We're not gonna use this. That popped up on Etsy. We're not gonna use Etsy. We'll use eBay. <laughs> All right. Look at that. That is such a well-designed poster. Like, look at it. It's so good. Oh my God. Okay. Bree Bree. Because I told her that I was going to finish up work and then I remembered that I had this to work on. So I wanted to try to wrap this up while I was thinking about it. <laughs> I forgot. Whoop! Didn't mean to do that. I forgot to leave a section of this white, so. Okay. Alright, I think that's actually a good number of studies. So what we have here is what I am noticing is either using white to frame around it. Um, the American edition of the Secret of Nin poster also had a lot of white framing the image, which I thought was interesting considering the main, not the main, but like one of, one of the core memories of that movie. But that's just interesting to me. But also interesting is that there's like a single point of light that draws in the focus in these prints. So I'm thinking about maybe revisiting that and incorporating the idea of like a singular point of light focusing on the key aspect that I wanted to focus on. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that, that is coming along together much, much nicer. Oh yeah, that second pass at the composition is looking a whole heck of a lot better. I'm probably gonna do a couple more passes, but I'm gonna stop for now because Bree Bree! Yes, you! Got the camera on you, don't you dare scratch the wall. Megan. <sighs> what? Oh, is that right? Oh, you don't say. Okay, so after some iterations and some more iterations, uh, these are for a different project, so 
disregard those for now. But after some many, many iterations of a potential Capricorn poster, I have decided on this one. Let's get a little close up on that there. I've decided on that particular composition to work off of. I kind of skipped ahead a little bit and I started the uh, digital file for it already. Yeah. So for the remainder of this, we're just going to flip over to the digital process and some voiceover. When I drew this, I didn't have a working scanner or a printer, but Clip Studio Paint, my program of choice, can do 11 by 17 inch prints, so it's fine. I'll show you some of the cooler effects I did during the later stages of production. So I want to address the elephant in the room. The original pitch for this print was a sunnier, brighter illustration, and here we're going into a nighttime view. I just ultimately decided after doing the composition test that a darker composition would help some of the brighter colors, especially on the Capricorn girl herself, stand out and really pop. And it turns out in the final product, I was right. Anyways, some of the things to note about the production of this art. Number one, the moon was such a pain in the butt to place. It gave me so much heckin' trouble. I don't know why. Well, I kind of know why. Because I really wanted the focus to be drawn towards the Capricorn girl, but I wanted the eye for the viewer to be drawn in a more, like, natural way. And just placing that moon was so tricky. Eventually I got it to work, and its ultimate placement, I'm pleased with it, overall. Other thing, the horse, aka the unicorn. Now, I'm a little rusty with unicorns and horses. Fun fact, when I worked as a caricature artist, I would fairly regularly just take a week off the clock to sketch in my sketchbook to improve on certain elements that I needed to improve upon. One of those elements was horses, because you cannot believe how many small children will request to be drawn on a horse, or a pegasus, or a unicorn. There are so many unicorns that you need to know how to draw if you are going to draw caricatures at an amusement park. So I had to get real good at drawing horses. So there was just like a week where I drew nothing but horses in my sketchbook, and then by the end of that week, I got passable at it. I still need to practice more horses. You would think, having worked on a webcomic called Tiny Unicorn, that I would be better at drawing horses. I still feel a little rusty at it, so I'm gonna keep practicing at it. For all intents and purposes, though, I'm pretty pleased with how this unicorn came out. The knight in the back, I had a lot of fun with him. I also wanted to do something a little bit different. There was one part of me that almost wanted to give him a unicorn helmet, and then I went, nah, we'll give him devil's horn helmets, and then maybe a third horn that's a unicorn. But I really wanted to emphasize how not like the other unicorns the knight was. I wanted this knight to have the vibe of, oh, he's a unicorn hunter. He's dangerous and dark and hiding in the shadows. He might be, even be a ghost or something. I'll be honest about this too. This is more than likely not going to be an upcoming comic of any sort. I just really wanted to draw this movie poster idea. If there are other folks that want to run with a story about a catacorn girl and her unicorn friend, friend and a dark knight like by all means you have my blessing go for it i would love to read it
If you do write that story, feel free to share it down in the comments because heck yeah, I really want to read that. It always tickles me whenever I see other folks making stuff inspired by the art that I make. I don't get fan art very, very often, but when I do get it on occasion, it does make my day. So thank you. Some of the art effects, like the art special effects, going into this, I wanted to play around with layers and I really wanted to get a very subtle iridescent effect on the dress. This took a lot of trial and error and ultimately in the print version, when I finally like put the order in at the printer and I got the prints back, the effect showed more on the horns than it did on the dress. You have to look real close at the dress to see the sparkles. They are there, they're just super duper subtle. But I really wanted the sparkles to be on the dress and on the unicorn and catacorn horns because it's magic, man. So that's how we did that. So for the moon, the moon, I actually had to reference a page from The Legend of Jamie Roberts, this one specifically. In that panel, I actually referenced a different picture of the moon, but I wanted to reference that image file because that image file had specific layers and what those layer settings were so that I could be able to more easily replicate it over on the catacorn poster because like it's one thing to eyeball it and be like oh yeah the moon has craters of course it has craters it is another thing to be like oh this gray gradient needs to be at like a 20 percent multiply opacity And that is the Catacorn Girl print. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of making this absolute beauty. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. Look at her, she's so cute. I love her. Oh my gosh, yes. So prints of this are going to debut at the Be Excellent Festival of Games, which is at Sylvania, Ohio. Any leftover prints are going with me to the Ann Arbor Comic Arts Festival. And then after that, if I still have any left over, they're going to my next event. It's not going to be listed for sale on the store yet, but I already reached out to my patrons over on Kofi to see if any of them were interested in getting this print. They're getting the first pre-orders because their names are in the credits. Fun fact, all of the names of my patrons over on Kofi made it into the credits of this fake movie poster. I thought it was a very cute touch. I hope you like it. So, do all the YouTube stuff. I hope you stick around for the next art project, whatever that art project is. Thank you so much for watching. You are awesome.